What's up guys, welcome back to Road to the Two Comic Club. I'm Justin and today is going to be a three day recap. Uh, recapping Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, May 21st to the 23rd. Um, so I apologize, I know you guys are probably seeing this way later, but um, there's a lot to talk about and I'm not gonna talk about everything, but I am gonna put links to uh, in the description for these articles and videos that uh, are worth checking out in case you missed um, these particular pieces of news. In fact, I almost missed a piece of news about Zillow that was pretty big and I didn't even hear about it. It just kind of flew under the radar. And while researching for this video, I just happened to click on the link and uh, yeah, and I'll talk about that later on. But so it's just, yeah, so if you did miss anything, just kind of glance at the articles, even if you're just reading the headlines, just to kind of quickly brush up with things that you might've missed. Um, some of the stuff you already probably know based on when you're watching this. So anyways, let's just get into it. Um, so on May 21st, we had a um, pretty good day. Let me look at my notes here. But Nvidia struggled a little bit. That was one of the few stocks that didn't go up. And uh, so I'll show, I'll post a screenshot, obviously, like I do of the stocks, the widget that I look at on my phone. By the way, I use an iPhone, so if you're wondering where that comes from, it's like a, a widget that comes installed on the iPhone. I just customized it to the stocks that I look at. But anyways, um, some of our top winners were Boeing, Universal Display, Red Hat, Tesla, Netflix, Alibaba, Intel, and Google. And uh, I did notice something weird that happens, and I'll talk about that shortly when I get to the next day. It's just really weird, but we did close at 165.5K, uh, so pretty solid gain, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, but I didn't take any screenshots of news articles to read, so I don't really have much to report on in terms of news. So let's just go into uh, the 20, well I'll post, you know, obviously screenshots if I, I don't wanna go too fast, but I do have screenshots here of the winners and losers or whatever, whatever screenshots I took, I'm gonna post them here so you can see my positions. Now let's talk about the weird thing about that. So on May 22nd, uh, stocks didn't do so well, so I'll post the screenshot of the widget. So the Dow dropped 179 points, but the Nasdaq only dropped about 16. So overall, I'm not too disappointed with how that played out. So we closed at 160,932.69 cents. Our top gainers, we have Nvidia, Red Hat, Micron, uh, Universal Display, Disney. Now here's where it gets weird. So yesterday, on the, or on the 21st, on Monday, it said that our, our, our calls for Universal Display, we have we had four calls, I believe. I can't remember how many, but anyways, that's not important. The, what's important is the price showed that the last price for that option was $12 or $1,200 per contract for those calls. Now, that was on May 21st. May 22nd, the price went down to $10.88 a share or you know $1,088 a contract, but it showed that it went up. And this is where I get really confused and so if you are familiar with, with TD Ameritrade's platform and their user interface or whatever, and you're, you know why this happens, I would really appreciate a comment. Uh, if you could leave a comment and kind of explain what's going on there. I really don't know. And uh, I haven't had any chance to, to call them to ask, but I kind of just noticed this. So it's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on. It's showing that Universal Display was a gainer today, even though its last price is lower than yesterday, so on Mondays. So I don't know why it did that. So. That's just something weird that I noticed. Um, so let's just talk about the articles. With Micron, they did have a good day today. They went up $3.55 a share. Uh, they have a new buyback strategy, and this article is called Micron's Buyback Strategy, Sell Low and Buy High, which obviously is counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, you wanna buy low and sell high to make money, but it is, it is an article that talks about, and I'll, again, I'll link in the description. It, it talks about how they're very positive on their future, so even though they're they sold um, stock to raise money before, and now they're buying back stock now. They do anticipate uh, their price to go up in the future. Uh, so it talks about the prediction that Micron is making, such as that fully autonomous vehicles will require 74 gigabytes of DRAM and one terabyte of NAND, N-A-N-D, as fully, I'm not an expert with that by the way, so if, if I'm saying it weird, please correct me. <laughs> Um, but as by 2025, they expect that with 26 million vehicles equipped with level three autonomy or higher, um, you know, shipping that year. So they're expecting a lot, a bigger increase in demand for that. I kind of agree. I do think we are going to self-driving cars. I do think more cars are going to have that and they are going to need those chips to help run all that software. So I kind of agree with them and yeah, I still like them. So the next article, Dow's after the bell, Dow drops 179 points. North as North Korea replaces China as market worry. This is kind of a general theme. It kind of goes back and forth between North Korea and 
China, trade tariffs, trade wars, all that stuff. Uh, at this point in time, I know by the time you were watching this, you will already know what happened, but Donald Trump was talking about the press conference uh, with South Korea's President Moon Jae-in. They had a press conference and he was talking about the summit with Kim Jong-un. He might be delayed a little bit, so obviously you'll know what happens by the time you see this, but that's just what happened on that day. This article also mentioned that the sell in May, like go away thing that people always say, hasn't really played out. It hasn't really played out that, you know, it, the stocks actually have gone up in May. In fact, the S&P is up 2.9% so far this month as of the 22nd. And it, but it also said it may pay still to take less risk in the coming months. So, and they also, they mentioned that stocks with higher beta, if you're not familiar with beta, it's just like a number that kind of refers to how risky a stock is or how volatile, how volatile a stock is, not risky. It's just how volatile. I guess they kind of go in hand in hand though, don't they? So, um, yeah. So anyways, stocks with higher beta tend to underperform during the months from May to October, which are usually called like the worst six months. Uh, November to April are usually considered the best six months. So stocks with higher beta usually underperform during those that amount of time. So if you are looking at stocks to invest in and you, and you look at the beta of the stocks you're looking at, you notice a lot of them are pretty high. Basically anything over one is a little bit more risky. Anything under one is less risky. So that's a little bit information about beta, but if you want to look it up, I would highly recommend you Googling it just to get, just to read up a little bit about how that works. But that's what that article said. Let's move on to the next one. The U.S. stocks slip as investors weigh trade talks again. Yet again, another article about trade talks, and it's kind of saying the same stuff. They also mentioned that Boeing was the biggest drag on the blue chips, uh, falling eight dollars and ninety cents, or two two point five percent, to three hundred and fifty five dollars a share. And then Caterpillar dropped two dollars and seventy two cents a share to one fifty six twenty. So not a good day for those guys. But let's just keep moving so that we can get this video. You know, I don't want to keep it too long. So on May 23rd, um, it was a pretty good day. Uh, we Dow closed up 52 points and the NASDAQ closed up 47 points. So a really good day for the NASDAQ. Uh, so our top gainers, we did close at 166,000, pretty much even almost. Amazon was our big gainer today. Uh, they went up $20 a share. And so our, you know, our call options did pretty well. And then uh, Nvidia, again, once again, I'm noticing a little price difference. So based on the last price in the screenshot, it says they closed at for the January 2020 calls that I have, it closed at $37.50 a share, even though according to the, the stock app, it was up $2.18. But however, according to the price a day before, it actually went down a dollar. So I don't know what's going on there. I guess really all that matters is when I sell it, how much more I made, that's the profit. I mean, I think that's all really that matters. Obviously, it's just kind of weird that it does that and it does bug me. However, a line, it did, the last price showed at $70.31 a share for our, our line calls. If you're not familiar with the line, they're the ones who make those Invisalign uh, teeth straighteners. So they're like braces, but they're clear, so they're a lot better looking, I guess. So <laughs> they're a really solid company. In fact, I believe in 2016, they were the number one performing stock in the S&P or something like that. They just destroy everybody. So, and they're still doing really solid. If you haven't looked them up, this ticker symbol ALGN, look up their, their charts, they're pretty solid. And so that, uh, the call option for us went up about uh, $6.87 according to them. According to my calculations, $8.61 a share. So either way, it went up. So that was awesome. So moving on, I'll, I'll post you know the, the rest of the screenshots. Our losers, we did have Domino's Pizza, Disney, Alibaba. But uh, so here's where we have a lot of articles and some a lot of interesting articles that I want to just kind of briefly t mention. I'm going to post links in the descriptions. If you missed all these, if you missed any of this information, just read up on it. It won't take long. This first article is what hyperfragmentation means for retail. It's talking about Amazon. And it's an interview with some guy and there's a video of it, but I had trouble playing it on my on my Safari app. So maybe I was on my mobile phone. So if you want to try it on your computer, it might work better. But it kept like reloading. It was really annoying. But anyways, they talk about how Amazon's consolidating everything and how it's kind of creating an opportunity for the small niche businesses to kind of thrive. And Shopify is helping businesses like that because it's just helping them, you know, promote their small e-commerce shops. And as Amazon consolidates more and more, uh, gets more mainstream, it's going to be hard for like General Mills and the Post of the world. They said they're going to get hurt the most. But um, also Twitter's, the Twitter's, Instagram's, Facebook's of the world are definitely benefiting because they're the ones who's helping these small niche businesses find all their customers. So if people are advertising through those platforms, you know, Facebook and Instagram are both owned by Facebook, obviously. So you know, they make a lot of money there with the ad revenue. And so, and uh, Twitter also makes a lot of money with ad revenue as well. So 
That's also important to, to know. Also, Square um, recently acquired Weebly, which I didn't know that. Weebly was a free website you could make, kind of like Wix, um, but Square recently acquired them to help compete against Shopify. And also, I didn't know this, according to this article, Square, if they'll charge an extra 1%, and if you do do that, you can get your money instantly direct deposited to you as the sales happen. So instead of waiting like a two to five day, two to five business day like processing time, um, if you do opt for that extra 1% charge, they can direct, they can get that money to you in the same day it looks like. So that's really awesome. Uh, it helps with, you know, people, the businesses working with their working capital and kind of with the books. It just kind of helps makes things easier for them. I thought that was really interesting. I didn't know that before. So let's keep, let's move on. Let's see what else I got here. Now this next article is talking about uh, it's Amazon Microsoft price targets raised on cloud computing leadership. Uh, so Cohen analyst raised Amazon's price target from to two thousand dollars from nineteen hundred, and raised Microsoft's from to one twelve from one hundred five. So whenever analysts raise price targets for companies, that's always a good news. And you should click this article because you want to you might want to read it to learn exactly how big the market of cloud computing is expected to be. And it really has some good information in there. And uh, cloud computing, uh, you don't want to fall asleep on that, definitely. So um, let's just keep moving on. Why Adobe is acquiring e-commerce company Magento for $1.68 billion, by the way, which is a pretty big number. Magento is an e-commerce website, just like Shopify. And, uh, you know, they want to improve their position in the e-commerce mar marketing market, according to this article. And which is currently uh, dominated by Salesforce.com, which you may have heard of. If you, if you haven't, want to look look into. And they're also trying to improve their uh, position in the CMS segment as well. So let's just keep moving on because speaking of Adobe, I'm going to switch the computer here, so sorry for that brief turnaround. But um, we have Adobe's doing a big buyback. Well, a new buyback program to boost shareholders' confidence is the name of this article. They announced a new share repurchase program, and it's authorized to buy back shares worth up to $8 million dollars. I believe that should have said billion. I believe that's a typo. Um, but this will be executed through the fiscal year 2021 and funded from future cash flow generation. Now the previous one, which is running through the through 2019, is $2.5 billion. And so this one's a bigger one. It's gonna run you know through 2021. So that's always good when companies buy back their stock. It kind of you know lowers the supply, which increases the demand, which usually raises the raises the price. So when companies do that, it's usually a sign of strength and that they're doing pretty well. So let's go to the next one about, this is just a random one I saw about Apple. Apple is missing out on billions of dollars by skirting the hottest trend in software. It's just talking about how they're not doing subscription model yet for their uh, video, video editing software, Final Cut Pro and also Logic Pro. Even though like we've clearly seen how that's worked really well for like for Adobe, for example. And so that just kind of mentions that. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, this one has about, is about real estate. So we're gonna talk about real estate real quick and then we're gonna go on to Netflix. So this one's called Thinking of Selling Your Home, Do It Before 2020, economists say. And so if you are looking into buying a house, you might have noticed prices have been, depending on where you are, prices are going up quite a bit. And um, there's, Zillow did like a study of over 100 real estate experts and economists, and roughly half of them predicted that the next recession will begin sometime in 2020, most likely the first quarter. And so if you are looking to buy a house, a lot of people are saying you want to maybe wait or and if you're selling a house, you want to might want to sell it, you know, now before it's too late. So that's just an interesting article about that. And then speaking of Zillow, this is the piece of information I found about Zillow that I didn't know. So this article is called three stocks that could put Nvidia's returns to shame. This article is kind of copy pasted. Like I see this headline, the same headline kind of multiple times, but every time it's like three different stocks or something like that. So this time it was talking about um, three companies, Atlassian, Atlassian, I never heard of them. Appian, haven't heard of that one. And Zillow, I heard of that one, obviously. So I kind of skimmed down to the bottom about Zillow. And this is the piece of information that really, really was interesting to me. So obviously Zillow, you know, they sell, they sell kind of advertising to real estate agents who want to like kind of get leads and stuff like that. So they do make money that way. Um, they generate about $1.1 billion in revenue. Uh, here's where it gets interesting. It says, also because it understands the real estate market so well, Zillow is now investing in real estate itself. It will create a marketplace where sellers can get an instant quote for their house and if accepted, Zillow will buy it, then turn around and flip the property. So Zillow is actually buying the houses themselves now and that's gonna be a huge profit potential for them, especially with how much data they have. It's like they're in such a good position to do that 
it's just ridiculous. And so the article says it could be a big opportunity by matching other buyers and sellers. You know, Zillow is essentially performing all the tasks itself. And I think this is huge for Zillow. The fact that they're actually buying houses now, I think it's crazy. This little piece of information, I almost glazed right over it. I didn't even click, you know, I almost didn't even click this headline because I've seen it so many times. I just kind of just kind of skipped over it, but I'm glad I did because man, that was a really, I'm really bullish on Zillow now after reading that. I mean, I was before, but I'm like a lot more now because a lot of potential. And as they say, there's a famous adage that says they're not making any more land. And so, which is true, you can't, can't make any more land. So, you know, demand's always gonna be competitive and I think Zillow's in a good spot. So anyways, that's about that. Let's, let's just keep going because there's like a few articles left I wanna talk about. Wall Street ends up as Fed seen keeping gradual approach to rate hikes. So if you miss this information, you can click on that link. I'm gonna skip it for now. Now this is, these last couple are, have to do with Netflix. So the Obamas, Barack Obama, you know, signed a deal with Netflix to create original content, including films. So him and Michelle Obama have, have signed a contract, it looks like, with Netflix. And I think, think that's pretty, I think that's pretty interesting. I know some people probably don't like that, but I think any time like, you know, a figure like that, even if it, like past presidents, Bill Clinton or George Bush, if they're making original content, I think on Netflix, I think I'd be pretty interested with, just based on that alone. So I think that's pretty interesting. Now, with Netflix, also they're betting big on Ryan Reynolds and Michael Bay. They're making a new movie. So the movie is called Six Underground, apparently. I've never heard of it. Um, so if you missed this piece of information, this news, it's, there's a video for the link in the description. It'll play a video for you. You can listen about it. And that's about wraps it up. So if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. What I'm probably going to be doing is one, probably two day recaps until I get caught up. And uh, so they might be, you know, around the 10 minute mark or maybe a little bit longer depending on how much is going on. But I'll try my best to keep them short. But thank you guys again so much for watching. And if you like it, hit that like button and subscribe and share with your friends uh, if they're getting interested in investing and want to see kind of how, how it is on a day to day basis. So thank you guys so much again and we'll see you tomorrow.